You're listening to Stand Out, Get Noticed, episode 243. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out, Get Noticed. I'm your host, Christina Cantors, speaker, coach, and founder of The C Method, where I'm all about helping professionals and leaders to build powerful communication skills. You can learn more at thecmethod.com. Well, welcome to 2020, my friends. This is pretty exciting, isn't it? I hope you um, have had a very restful and safe festive season and are starting your decade uh, well. (laughs) This is the first official episode of the year. Um, Over the last few weeks, we had featured a series of best of episodes, but now we're back to regular podcast programming. Now, normally at this time of the year, you know, it's early, early in the year, I usually think about doing a podcast about goal setting, you know, getting yourself set up right for the year. But to be honest, it doesn't really interest me at the moment. I think there's enough content going around around goal setting and resolutions. So instead, I'm I'm focusing on a topic that I am somewhat struggling with at the moment. And it's all about being kind to yourself. So here's the situation. My last official day of work last year was the 10th of December. And Then I went on a 10-day Vipassana silent meditation course, which some of you may know about if you've been listening to the podcast, you know, in November, December. And then when I came back, it was pretty much Christmas. And then after Christmas, it was Boxing Day and just hanging around. And then I went away for a couple of days over New Year's. Then I essentially rested and chilled out at home until starting back officially at work again on Monday the 6th. So after almost a month off, you'd think that I'd come back all rested and enthusiastic and ready to leap into the swing of things and be like, yeah, business, let's do this. Well, that, uh, well wrong. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Upon opening my laptop for the first time and being confronted with this tidal wave of emails and notifications and messages and people asking me to do this and that and get back to them, my first thought was, I don't want to do this. And as I started to work my way through the admin, other thoughts began to pop into my head. Thoughts like, Christina, it's a new year. Shouldn't you be focused on strategy and planning? And Christina, what about all those unfinished projects from last year? They should take priority. And, you know, I also had, Christina, you love what you do. So why are you feeling so unmotivated? And then I started to feel guilty that I hadn't done any writing or creative work during my time off. I had essentially been staying up late, sleeping in, lazing about, watching TV, hanging out with friends and family, shopping, eating, you know, eating indulgent foods. And, and I had all these thoughts going through my mind. And then yesterday I stopped myself and I was like, Christina, you're being really, really unkind to yourself. <laughs> Now, I don't know if this is what you're experiencing at the moment, seeing as it is a new year and you might have been telling yourself you were going to do certain things by next year and then you hadn't, Um, or maybe you've been out of routine for a while like I have and you're coming, you know, facing the prospect of coming back to work or, you know, maybe you're feeling not so hot about your career and things are a bit up in the air, you know, whatever it is, maybe you are feeling this way now or you know, maybe you've, you've experienced this. I mean, I'm sure we all have at some point. Think about where you have experienced this also in, at other times of your life. This could look like uh, beating yourself up over the small things, you know, saying, oh, why did I do that? Or why didn't I do that? Maybe you feel guilty about your actions or guilty about not taking action. Maybe you notice yourself saying things like, I should, you know, I should do this, I should do that, or I shouldn't have done this. If this is the case and you're noticing that you are beating yourself up, using unkind language towards yourself, then maybe it's time to practice a little more self-kindness. So in this episode, we're going to explore why self-kindness is important how to know if you deserve a little more self-kindness and also how to bring more of a self-kindness practice into your life. And I've got five big ideas to share with you. 
Now, of course, there are many different ways you can do this, but I've, I've picked five, uh, five that I found have worked for me. Oh, and if you're wondering, Christina, where's, where's your Vipassana podcast? <laughs> Don't worry, I will absolutely be sharing more of my Vipassana experience and learnings in upcoming episodes. Um, as you will find out, there was a, a lot to absorb and take on, so I'm still taking the time to, to process it because I want to make sure when I share it with you, it is well thought out and not, you know, one long stream of consciousness. All right, before we dive in, I do have a couple of shout outs. Um, firstly, I want to shout out, give a shout out to Lee, who is a podcast listener who connected with me on LinkedIn. And she sent me a message that said, um, hi, Christina, I have been listening to your podcast and have been really enjoying them. I like and really appreciate that you share your personal experience and are not afraid of being vulnerable. That makes the messages you try to convey so genuine and powerful. Every time I listen to your podcast, I feel I'm listening to a friend telling their stories. I like to hear your growth and learnings and I feel I'm growing with you. So I just want to say thank you. Happy New Year and have a great year ahead. Thank you so much, Lee, for your beautiful message. Um, It's messages like that that really that reinforce what it is that that I put out into the world and um, hearing what makes it useful and um, and inspiring for you it helps me to keep on keep on doing that and doing more of that so thank you Lee for your feedback I really really appreciate it I also want to give a shout out to Deepak who is a member of the C Method Academy uh, my monthly membership and accountability program and we have actually I will talk about bit about this in the podcast we have a a celebration wall in our slack channel where I encourage all the members to share their wins and Deepak reported a win recently and I was so excited for him I just had to share it here he um he wrote I participated in five out of six speech contests of my Toastmasters club so Toastmasters is a, um, a club where you learn to develop your public speaking skills And he wrote, Deepak wrote, as part of my preparation, I deliberately spent less time on the mechanics of speech preparation and more on preparing the mindset for how to deliver a speech. I went over podcast episode 181 um, by Christina twice and Deepak writes, it helped me immensely to deliver my speeches from a different mindset. It worked well as I got first prize in all the five different contests. He writes, the fact that I could get handsome results with minimal preparation demonstrated that it's not as much about the quantity of time spent on preparing a speech as it's about having the right mindset before going to the podium. Thank you, Christina, for the wonderful podcast. Anyone who is planning to deliver a speech or make a presentation, I highly recommend going through episode 181 as a refresher before the event. A big thank you to Deepak for sharing that with us and thank you for letting me share that on, on the podcast as well. And congratulations on winning five or all five speech contests. Um, I will link up to episode 181 in the show notes of this episode if you are keen to check that out to help you in your mindset before speaking as well. Um, thank you also to all the listeners who have written to ask if I've been okay during the Australian bushfires. I know that it's been making news Um, overseas. Thankfully, I haven't been near the affected areas. Um, So thanks to everyone uh, for your concern. Uh, We have had a thick blanket of smoke covering Melbourne City though, which has been made it kind of hard to go outside because the air quality has been very poor. But I I have so much uh, compassion for the people who have lost their homes or are still Um, isolated and unable to get back to their homes because of the fires so um, thanks everyone for your thoughts and um, and and my my thoughts are with those who are affected as well all right let's get into self-kindness so firstly why is self-kindness kindness important well I want you to think about it this way you are the only person you will have a relationship with your whole life, right? Other people will come and go, but you are stuck with you until you leave this earth. So you may as well make the effort to be a good companion for you, all right? If for no other reason, there's one good reason for you. 
I love this quote from Oscar Wilde who wrote, to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. So think of it as that. You're courting yourself. You're going to be with yourself forever. So you may as well start to uh, be kind to yourself. And when you start to do this, you when you fill your own cup with self-kindness and love, you will increase your overall, you know, your overall happiness, um, not just for you, but for others, because you will become a better person for others too. So if you're someone who is constantly doing things for others and putting other people first, think about it like you're filling their cups and emptying yours. You're essentially neglecting yourself and eventually you will burn out and even helping others won't bring you that joy and, and fulfillment. It's much easier to fill other people's cups when yours is full. So think about it that way. When you, when you have more love, compassion and kindness for yourself and your cup of kindness is full, this flows over to others as well. Wilfred Peterson uh, once said, be gentle with yourself, learn to love yourself, to forgive yourself. For only as we have the right attitude towards ourselves, can we have the right attitude towards others? And this is what I love. All right. So in terms of what I mean by self-kindness, and I'm, I guess I'm, I'm like using self-kindness and self-love here interchangeably. There are, when I was researching this, there were psychologists that had real specific definitions for each one, but for purposes of this, I'm going to use them interchangeably. So one definition I found for self-kindness is a state of appreciation for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical, psychological, and spiritual growth. So it's a state of appreciation for oneself. And we can achieve this or we can continue to grow it through our actions or through our thoughts. And I'll go into how we can do that um, a bit further into this podcast. Um. I was reading an article by psychologist and author, uh, Courtney Ackerman, and she describes self-kindness as involving refraining from criticizing and castigating yourself for a mistake or a flaw and being understanding and supportive to ourselves. So removing from the criticizing of ourselves and being more understanding and supportive. So it's essentially treating ourselves really nicely like we would treat a dear friend, okay? So I I personally believe that, you know, you might be thinking, well, how's this related to communication, you know, and, and in the workplace? I want you to think about all the situations at work where you may have criticized yourself, where you may have made a mistake or not achieved what you wanted and then you've you've been very, very hard on yourself. And I know the fact that you are listening to this podcast, you are a high-performing person. You are ambitious. You are already successful. You're striving for more success. Some of you might have perfectionist tendencies Some of you might be in a position where you are feeling like an imposter and oftentimes all this self-criticizing and castigating and, you know, not being kind, being unkind, this can all start to come out as well. I was working with a client uh, late last year and she was always beating herself up about how she could have done a presentation better but in a more destructive way, you know, oh, I should have done that. I should, I, I, I messed that up. I didn't do that right. They looked bored. I didn't, I didn't get my point across. And that's the sort of, you know, beating yourself up that takes away from that self-kindness. So practicing more of this self-kindness is going to help you to have an easier time at work and to um, just feel better about your achievements Is that something you want? I hope so. I certainly do. So let's dive into how do you do it? And these are my five big ideas for you. The first step is to be aware of how you talk talk to yourself. All right, so awareness is is key. Even if you do nothing else, I want you to be aware of what is it exactly you're saying to yourself. Um, In terms of you know, listening to your inner voice. This is one of the foundations of all the work that I do with my clients. So think about, be aware, is your voice saying you didn't do this right or they won't listen to you or who do you think you are or you're not experienced enough to do that? 
Also be aware of language like, oh, I really should be doing more of this or I shouldn't have been doing more of that. These types of thoughts also lead to feelings of guilt. So, you know, being aware of the feelings that you have. So if you are feeling a level of guilt that, oh, I should be doing something else, I should be somewhere else, I should be doing more, I should be doing less, I should, you know, are you feeling guilty about saying no to someone? Are you feeling guilty about saying yes to someone? Um, all of th- this type of feeling is an indication that, you know, maybe you're not being as kind to yourself as you could be. So start to be aware. And you can do this by, you know, maybe you can keep a journal or write some, write a note somewhere to remind yourself, maybe put it as a background on your phone, um, whatever that is, start to be more aware. Number two, the second big idea is to become your own bestie. I interviewed the wonderful Samantha Saki in episode 223. We talked about what is self-awareness. And something that really stood out to me about Samantha was, was the part where she talked about how she has so much fun with herself. And she said, you know, I've, I've learned how to become my own best friend. I have so much fun with myself. I talk to myself and I know it sounds crazy, but I talk to myself and I laugh and I laugh at myself and it's something that she's been developing and, and I thought this was fantastic where she, because she, where she's learning to become her own best friend. So when you firstly become aware of how you're talking to yourself, I want you to think, what would I say to a dear friend? So think about yourself as a dear friend and ask, what would I say in this moment? If a dear friend came to me and said, oh, I stuffed up that presentation or, or I, I didn't get that promotion, I messed up the interview, I could have done this and I could have done that, but I didn't, I should have prepared more. What would you then say to that, to say to that person? Would you be as unkind and un- unforgiving as you are to yourself? I would certainly hope not. Thinking back to my situation where I was being unkind to myself, around or where I have been unkind unkind, unkind to myself around, you know, you shouldn't have been so lazy. You should have, why aren't you doing more creative work? Why are you focused on admin? You should be, you know, I, I was thinking if someone came to me with a friend came, if a friend came to me with those challenges, I would say to them, um, of course, it's okay to spend your holidays lazing about. That's what holidays are for. Of course, it's normal to take some time to get back into work. You haven't, you haven't been at work for almost a month. Of course, it's going to take some time. This is only temporary. You remember all the other times where you went overseas or had long amounts of time off and you came back? You felt the same way, but remember you got back into it and you were fine. So just go easy on the first few days. It's not a race. No one's expecting you to be at 100% on your first day back. That's what I would say to a good friend of mine. And so that's what I've been having to remind myself um, of instead of beating myself up. So becoming your own bestie, that was number two, big idea for you. Number three is to give yourself recognition. I mentioned earlier that in the academy we have a celebration wall and this is where I encourage all of our members to post up their wins, whether it's big, whether it's small, I don't care how small it is, but to post up something so that we can recognize what we've accomplished. And this is so important for me that I, the, so every month in the academy, I release a masterclass, which is like a mini course with videos and, and worksheets. And the masterclass for December was all about reflecting on your 2019 and celebrating your wins. And that that's the entire masterclass is dedicated to that. And, you know, I believe it is so important to, you know, not just wait for other people to give us recognition, but you, I want to give you permission to give yourself recognition as well. I interviewed um, podcaster Laura Coe back in episode 108 on how to live authentically. And something that she, I remember she telling me, I remember she told me is that she gives herself recognition for even the smallest accomplishments. So like even sending an email, she'll just go, yes. You know, she'll do a little, yes, great job. Even for sending one email and for her giving herself these small moments of recognition helped her to build that up. 
So you don't have to wait for something big to go, I did well. You know, even the small things, even the fact that you got up early or the fact that you cooked yourself a healthy meal or the fact that you, um, let's say, initiated a conversation with someone or was the first to speak in a meeting instead of going, oh, well, I did, but my idea wasn't taken on board. So there's no point. You know, instead of beating yourself up about what maybe went wrong, focus instead on what you did, what you did well. I remember, um, well, something that I tend to do in, in my business is I tend to put pressure on myself to make more money. You know, it's always this thing, like I tend to set these like massive goals and then go, why am I not at that point yet? And then And at the end of last year, I remember I was reflecting and thinking, um, Christina, you and Aaron threw a wedding. You threw a festival. We traveled overseas three times. We bought an apartment. We kicked butt. You were able to do all of that. What makes you think that, you know, you, you need to make more money? Like that's, look at all the things you've achieved this year. And then I reflect back and I go, oh yeah, I actually, you know, you know, actually did quite well. So it's just this, these unnecessarily high standards that I place on myself, which I know that we all tend to do at some point. All right, before we get to big ideas four and five, let's take a quick break because I have something I want to share with you. Hey, Rockstar, is 2020 your year for taking your communication and leadership skills to the next level? If that is the case, then I invite you to join the C-Method Academy, which is our monthly members-only training and accountability program. Now, the Academy developed from the extensive work I've done with ambitious professionals and leaders using real-life tools and exercises that actually work and make an impact. Every month, you get access to new masterclasses, live webinars with me, and access to the community through an online platform. If you are a fan of this podcast and you want to take your learnings and your development further in a supportive environment, then this program will absolutely help you to do that. Now, I only open the Academy up a few times a year. Doors open next in February for two weeks only. So to get access to early bird discounts for membership, make sure you join the wait list, all right? You'll be the first to be notified of when it opens and also get access to those early bird rates. Go to thecmethod.com slash join in order to sign up. And when you sign up, I'll also send you my webinar replay of the keys to assertive communication. That is a webinar that is jam-packed full of tips and tricks on how to boost your assertiveness in the workplace. Go to thecmethod.com slash join. That link is also in the description of your app. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, we are up to number four in terms of fourth big idea on how to be more kind to yourself. Number four is to forgive yourself. Now, to forgive yourself, this could look like literally looking in the mirror and saying to yourself, I forgive you for, and you can list off, you know, three things, five things. You could say, you know, and these could be the simplest things, you know, like I I forgive you for being hard on yourself. I forgive you for having perfectionist tendencies. I forgive you for forgetting to pay that electricity bill on time. (laughs) right? It could be, it could be anything. I forgive you for not wanting to dive straight back into work after some time off, right? And when you can look yourself in the eye and say that it does, I mean, for me, I find anyway, it really lifts some of that pressure off your shoulders and you feel more calm and and, and at peace. There's a, a beautiful podcast and meditation series called Live Awake, by Sarah Blondin. Um, If self-kindness and self-compassion and forgiveness is something that you really struggle with, then I highly recommend that you check it out. I'll link it in the show notes as well. Um, It's called Live Awake. Um, The loving loving and listening to yourself episode is one of my favorites, but there's also other episodes on forgiveness, permission, 
compassion and so on. It's really, really beautiful. So do check it out. All right. So that's number four. The final idea I'm going to share with you, number five, on how to be more kind to yourself is to accept where you are right now. Now, amongst many of the things I learned at Vipassana, um, well, one of the, I'm going to share more in the future episode, but I'll share one with you now. And something that we learned was to be 100% aware in the moment and accepting what is not as you would like it to be. Accepting what is not as not as you would like it to be. A really simple example. So we were meditating purely on our breath. So just noticing, observing the um, sensation of the breath coming out of our nostrils onto our upper lip. And we had to observe, is it coming through the left nostril? Is it coming through the right nostril or both nostrils? Is it faint? Is it strong? And observing it as it is, for example, going, okay, my breath is weak and it's coming out my left nostril, as opposed to thinking, why is my breath not coming out through both nostrils? Why is my nose blocked? Why is my breathing so weak? Should I be breathing more deeply? Should I be breathing, you know, harder, quicker? Why is it, you know, it's, and so instead of thinking about what we want it to be, just accepting and going, you know what, it's coming through the left nostril. <laughs> it's coming through both or whatever it is. And then, of course, the greater lesson from this, extending it out into into life, is to um, accepting yourself as you are right now in this moment. Not wanting to be something different, not believing that you need to be something else or should be more or less, but it, seeing yourself and accepting yourself as you are right now. I remember like I used to really struggle with this in the first few years of my business, like really struggle. And I used to have the thought I should be much further along than I am right now. I should be much further along than I am right now. I also had other thoughts like, you know, I thought I would have achieved so much more by now. And that thought used to be very strong for me. It's not completely gone. It still sidles up to me every now and again. And I go, oh, hello, thought. I see you there. <laughs> Thanks for popping up. Don't really need you. Um, and what I found, what really resonated with me was a beautiful affirmation that goes, I am exactly where I am supposed to be. I already have everything I need to be successful. And this this affirmation counteracts that thought of, um, you know, I need to be further along or I need to be more or I, you know, I'm not happy with where I am right now. Just the affirmation, I am exactly where I am supposed to be right now. I already have everything I need to be successful. So if you notice yourself having similar thoughts around not being happy with where you are, then I highly recommend that you have create an affirmation or some sort of mindfulness practice where you can start to um, be okay with where you are at and know that as long as you are taking daily actions towards where you do want to go, that's also fine. So acceptance is not the same as being like, oh, I'm not going to try. I'm just going to be here right now and just not bother doing anything and be a slob. That's not what it's about. It's about healthily striving for the next thing and taking that intentional daily effort each day, but then, but being okay with you as you are right now. All right. So those are my five big ideas for you for being kind to yourself. A quick recap. Number one, be aware of how you talk to yourself. Number two, become your own bestie. Number three, give yourself recognition. Number four, forgive yourself. And number five, accept where you are right now. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Christine, that's all well and good to be self-kind and have self-love, but I don't want to become that self-absorbed person who's like full of themselves and, you know, it's like, oh, I love myself so much. I don't want to be that person. Look, I get it. I get it. You don't want to become that person. Now, there is a difference, all right? There is a difference between someone who is self-loving and someone who is self-absorbed. And I'm sure we all know someone who is self-absorbed. 
Now, someone who, the difference is someone who is self-loving is driven by compassion, right? They, they appreciate their self-worth and also others' worth, right? They have a, they, um, and they also have a positive impact on other people. So when you are fully self-loving and have self-kindness for yourself, you have filled up your own cup, right? Of, of wellness, of, of self-worth. You truly appreciate yourself, right? And you, you have that focus on, on, on filling your cup. Someone who is self-absorbed is more about, they're more about the ego. So they're driven by ego and competition and the desire to impress others. And they might appear to be strong and confident on the outside, but on the inside, their cup is actually empty, right? They, they want to, it's more of a narcissism. You know, they want to prove that they're better than everyone else and make sure that others see them the way they want to be seen. Real self-love is more about, you know, I'm okay with how I am and I, you know, without expecting that attention from other people, you're not needing it from other people in order to feel good about yourself. You know, you are supplying your own stream of love for feeling good about yourself. Now, Sometimes, you know, we might move between the two. We might move into the self-absorption side and, and look, that's okay. The key is to just be aware. And if you do lean, if you find yourself leaning into becoming more self-absorbed, then go back to step four and forgive yourself for it. But honestly, if you're listening to this podcast and you are very aware of not becoming self-absorbed, then I can almost guarantee that you won't because it's just not in your nature. But I don't want the fear of becoming self-absorbed to stop you from showing kindness and love to yourself, okay? So I hope that that has been somewhat of a um, helpful episode for you and a timely one for you too. I know it's certainly been a topic that's um, on, been on my mind uh, or affecting me recently. Um, if you want to get links to all the uh, the resources and the links that I mentioned, go to the show notes at thecmethod.com slash 243. Link is also in the description um, of this app, of your app. And finally, before I leave you, remember to sign up for the C Method Academy waitlist, which is launching in February, which I'm really excited about. I will send you my webinar, The Keys to Assertive Communication, um, if you sign up on at the waitlist as well. Go to thecmethod.com slash join. All right. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Beautiful people. Keep on being awesome. And I'll talk to you next week. I'm Christina Cantors, and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Bye.